I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now we are still talking about the manifestation of God's love. And I believe the Lord is opening your heart to learn lots and lots of things from this. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can you make the man join me right now? releasing your faith and in agreement with me as we make demand for our daily bread. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now then, we were looking at something yesterday. I told you we're looking at the life of Jacob and how he manifested the love of God. So Genesis 28. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we, we, we started reading from verse 10. I read how God made him a promise. God appeared to Jacob for the first time and gave him a promise. And Jacob woke up from that dream. It was a dream. Like, wow, so God was in this place and I did not know. Now, first and foremost, that appearance of God was God demonstrating love to Jacob. Yes. So when we say we love him because he first loved us, what's he referring to? How did he love us first? He brought his word to us first. God's demonstration of love to you is his word. Oh, yes, it's his word. See, if the word of God doesn't come, no matter the physical thing that comes, cannot be proof to his word or cannot be, um, cannot be the, the evidence of his love. Now, you can get things anyhow. You, I mean, you can save money and buy things. You can... But there is a difference when God gives you something. Now, that's what we're going to be seeing in, in Jacob's life. So watch this now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I'll read from verse 16 again. And Jacob awake. Now, I'm reading the old King James now. And Jacob awake out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord. Now, he had this dream in the middle of the night. And from that dream, he woke up. He said, Wow. Surely God is in this place, and I did not know. Praise God. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then look at verse 18. And Jacob rose up early in the morning. Now, now, how many times did he wake up? Twice. You know how you had a dream, maybe around 2 a.m. I thought, wow, wow. And then you're meditating on what you just saw. And you're like, wow, wow. And then you sleep again. And then you wake up. The normal time you wake up. Now that's why it says, And Jacob woke up early, rose up early in the morning, and took the stone that he had put for his pillow, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil upon the top of it, and called the name of the place better. But the name of the city was called Luz at the first and Jacob vowed a vow, saying, now take note of this. When Jacob woke up, now when, you know, the first time when he had that dream, he woke up and like, wow. Then he slept again. Then when he woke up in the morning, see, I said, response, response. How you respond to God will determine what you get. So he woke up after that dream and was so amazed, just like it happens to anyone. You wake up and you're like, wow, what did I just see? Wow. I saw myself in a mansion. I saw myself in a beautiful place. I saw myself in that organization. Wow. And you're doing all the wow and wow. Say, Father, hey, Father, do it for me. Oh, Father, do it for me. Father, do it for me. And then you sleep again. Now, at that very moment, you're under the influence of that dream or that revelation you have seen. 
at that very moment, what you say may not matter, may not be strong. That's what I mean. Give yourself some time. How many times have you had those dreams or revelations or visions? And after some days, you think about it like, man, man that dream was sweeter. And that's all. Does God, to speak, does God speak through dreams? Perfectly. He does. 100%. I didn't say all the time. I said, Hundred percent, God can speak to you through dreams. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now watch this. So now he has woken up from sleep. This is morning. Continue your journey. But this is what he did. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, "If God will." Be with me. Now, this is his mind walking now. He is no longer under the influence of that dream. But then he had accepted that dream as a reality to him. Now, take note of that. He could have discarded that dream. And just like, I just had one dream, Sha. But he is about to make a decision based on that dream he had. Now, what's that? That's acceptance. That is not just a dream. It is reality. So he says, and he vowed, he vowed, if God will be with me. Now, did God say he was going to be with him? Yes, he said so in his promise. And will Keep me in the way that I go. Did God say he will be with him? Yes, he said. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And give me, look, watch this. And will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. Bread to eat and clothes to wear. Now, the clothes also means covering. See that now. It says, if he will do these things for me, Verse 21, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tent unto thee. Now, he, he didn't make this commitment when he left home. He made this commitment when he encountered the Lord. Now, this was his response to that encounter. God demonstrated love to him by that visitation. Now, this is Jacob now demonstrating love. First of all, receiving the love of God. That was demonstrated to him. And then now he's responding to that love by his commitment. You know, this is what is called a covenant. This was actually a covenant that Jacob entered with God right here. If you will do this for me. Now, now, I know sometimes people just come up and say, Father, if you will do this for me, I will do this. What are you responding to? And they say, I entered into a covenant with God. Now, if God will do this for me, how do you call that a covenant? It's one-sided. Did you meet God to, do that, to make that covenant? You didn't meet God. You just woke up one day and said, Ah, me too. I'm going to make God a covenant. Father, if you will give me that job, this is what I'm going to do to you. That's not a covenant. That's not a covenant. You're, that, you're trying to rope God. A covenant always comes as a result of an encounter. So God tells you, this is what I want from you. And this is what I want you to do. And then you say, and he tells you, this is what I'm going to do, give to you. And then you say, Lord, if you will do as you have said, I am affirming 
I'll do my part. Now, many of God's children have wasted encounters. But I'm sharing this with you so that because I haven't learned this, then I expect the visitation of God in your life. Even if you have lost it before, I'm trusting the Lord because you have learned now. He will give you another opportunity. So you see Jacob being smart enough to say, Lord, if you would do what you have said, and then this one, I told you something. I said, Jacob was a man of integrity. He was a man of integrity. So he said, if you would do what you have said, and give me bread to eat and clothes to put on. Now, why did Jacob include that? I'll tell you why. That is the point. Ah, yeah. You want to know the roots of every iniquity? You want to know the root of every sin? What will I eat? What will I put on? Oh, great men have fallen just because of these two things. That's the reason Jesus clearly stated, take no thought for your life. These have separated friends. These have brought men low, great men, I'm, I'm telling you. What will I eat? You do business with someone, everything was supposed to go well. Suddenly someone is thinking, what will I eat? Or oh, clothes. What will be my coat? And they want to gather everything and save it somewhere that they will be able to eat for the rest of their lives. But they don't realize that that has never been your responsibility. Never. Never. It has never been your responsibility. Everything you do because of these two things is an error. If you go get a job because of what you will eat and because of clothes covering, you're working in error. Because it has never been your responsibility. It has always been God's responsibility. I'm telling you the truth. What you will eat and clothes you will put on, covering, house, that's all your covering. It has always been God's responsibility. So what Jacob was asking here was actually by revelation. It was by revelation. He said, Lord, if you will give me this, this is what I vow to do. This place will be your house. And financially, everything you give me, I'm going to give a tent to you. Everything, he said, everything. Everything. Now, where did he learn that from? I've told you this several times. He learned it from his father, Abraham and Isaac. He learned to tithe from them. So he had heard about the tithe and he knew that you tithe to God. Now, was he tithing before now? There was no record. But the day he met God, he was smart enough to say, I activate the tithes. Now, because you find God telling him the same thing he told Abraham and the same thing he told Isaac. He said, through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. He told him, he says, through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And guess what? The thing that activates the blessing of the Lord, the activate the blessing of for all families of the earth is the tithe. Now I've, I've done a teaching on this before. So when he heard God say, "Through you and your seed." All the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, he's heard that before. 
He's heard that from his father. Because that was the covenant the father was carrying. And they must have taught it to their children. Through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So that day, Jacob came into the love of God. He received it. And he said, Lord, I'm going to continue this tradition that I learned from my fathers. And I'm going to tithe everything you give to. I'll give it thanks to you. Now remember, you know, sometimes you just ask yourself, in those days, they didn't have um, priests. They didn't have. So how were they tied to? That's why there had to be an encounter. The same way Abraham tied. Tied it. The same way Isaac tied it. The same way Jacob gave his tithes. They gave it by the direction of the one whom they gave it. He directed them and told them what to do with it. Now, watch this. So he made this commitment to God. And then he got to his uncle's house, Laban's house. Now, something of note, and it's something I want you to think about. When he got to Laban's house, and he stayed, of course, you know how, read the story. He stayed in Laban's house for one month, helping out, just normal. And then after a month staying in Laban's house, Laban said to him, hey, guy, you're just in my house. Um, I think it's right we structure a payment for you. You've been working for me. Why, why don't we structure a payment for you? He says, well, okay, sir. Um, so actually, I like your daughter. And I don't mind marrying her. He said, okay. I'd rather give her to you than someone else. Okay, so... What if, based on her bride price, I labor seven years for her? Now, he didn't just say, I want to labor seven years for her. It was based on the wages they pay in those days that he calculated seven years wage. It would take him seven years to gather what it required to pay for her bride price. Now, here is the point. This man had come into a covenant with God. Remember, his father was still alive. And when he saw a girl he liked, this is his mother's brother, his uncle. He could have easily said, Please send, even if he was still afraid of Esau, he could have easily said, please send servants to my father and tell him, I have seen the wife he told me to come and marry. And these are the requirements. Please tell him to send it down so that I can have a wife. Jacob didn't do that. It was an option, but he didn't take it. Why? Because he had made up his mind from that encounter that from this moment, I will trust God for everything. I'm not going to look back where I'm coming from. I'm not going to depend on where. I, now his dad was still alive. Even when he was cheated after seven years and they gave him the wrong wife. And then they now said, You've got to make payment for another, of another seven years to have the two of them. At that point, you just feel this guy should have gone, okay, all right, you know what? I, I can produce the money. I'm going to send to my dad and get the money and pay you now. Now I'm not going to work again. But he didn't. He stayed put there, trusting in the Lord whom he had come into covenant with. You see, 
Jacob began to enjoy the manifestation of God's love because he made up his mind for it. He didn't choose the options that were available. They were cheap options, but he didn't take it. If God will be with me, because God has said, I will be with you. So if God will be with me, then, you know, he said in verse 21, the last part of verse 21 says, Then shall the Lord be my God. Now that's a very powerful statement. And my time is up. Praise God. Hmm. Is the Lord your God? We'll talk about that tomorrow. Praise God. Father, thank you. Your eyes are upon the earth. And you're looking for this one set of people. Those whose hearts are perfect towards you. And you want to make them strong. Find these ones listening and watching me right now. Strengthen yourself in them. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.